In this video, we'll take what we've learned about the mole a step further and apply it to solutions. We've already said that a mole is when we have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of something. This something can be molecules or atoms or shoes, but not really because that would be way too many shoes. Usually, this would be enough information to describe the quantity of a certain atom or molecule that we have. However, in solutions, we have another component which we need to consider, the solvent. Because of this, when we describe solutions, we use concentration. Concentration is a way to describe the amount of solute dissolved per volume of solution. In chemistry, molarity is a common way of expressing concentration because it allows us to express the amount of solute in terms of moles. So molarity is equal to the number of moles per volume in liters of solution. So let's say we had 95 grams of glucose and we used it to prepare 700 milliliters of solution. What is the concentration of glucose in the solution? We said that molarity is equal to the number of moles over the volume of solution. This means that we first need to convert the amount of glucose in grams into moles by using the molar mass of glucose. The molar mass of glucose is 180.16 grams per mole. When we multiply 95 grams of glucose, what we start with, with this conversion factor, we get that there are 0.527 moles in 95 grams of glucose. Notice that since the given amount of glucose, which is 95 grams, limits our significant figures, our answer should be expressed to two significant figures. But we have one more step in the problem, so we'll express this first answer to three digits. Keeping an extra digit allows us to ensure our final answer is precise. We are also given that we form 700 milliliters of solution. We must express volume in liters when using molarity. So we'll put 0.700 liters in the denominator and 0.527 moles in the numerator. Once we do this calculation, we see that the molarity of this solution is 0.75 molar. It's important to note that the volume and molarity represents the volume of the entire solution, not just the volume of the solvent. In the previous problem, we had a volume of 700 milliliters. This amount described the volume of the solution with the glucose dissolved in the solvent. So the actual amount of solvent is actually less than 700 milliliters because the glucose took up a small amount of space in the container to bring the total volume to 700 milliliters. What would happen to the molarity of the solution if we were to add an additional 100 milliliters of solvent to the solution? To increase the total volume, we just added solvent to our solution. That means that the number of moles of glucose stayed the same. This means that there are less glucose molecules in a certain area of the solution. They are able to spread out more in the solution. This means that the solution becomes more diluted. If we were to look at this mathematically, we see that the only part of our molarity equation that changes is the denominator. It increases. An increase in the denominator causes molarity to decrease. This means that molarity and volume are inversely related. Assuming that the number of moles of solute stays the same, as the volume of the solution increases, the molarity decreases. Now let's take a look back at our original solution the one with 0.527 moles of glucose that made 700 milliliters of solution. Assuming the total volume doesn't change, what if we had originally added more glucose, 0.75 moles to be exact, to the solution? If we had a greater amount of glucose molecules in the same amount of solution, this means that there is a greater amount of the molecules in an area. They do not have enough space in the solvent to spread out more. This means that the solution is more concentrated. Once again, let's also look at our equation for molarity. The only factor that changes is the number of moles. The amount of volume in the solution stays the same. This causes the molarity to increase. So we see that the number of moles of solute and molarity are directly related. Assuming the volume stays the same, as the number of moles of solute increases, so does the molarity of the solution. One crucial skill to master is the ability to go in the opposite direction as well to figure out how many moles of a solute are present in a certain volume of solution. After all, it's the number of moles that will be involved in our stoichiometry and limiting reagent calculations. How many moles of sucrose are there in 25.0 milliliters of a 0.077 molar solution of sucrose? To calculate molarity, we divide the number of moles by the volume of the solution. However, in this problem, we already have the molarity and the volume. We want to find the number of moles of sucrose in this solution. 
We can do so by multiplying the molarity by the volume of the solution. We'll get that there is 0.0019 moles of sucrose in the solution. Finally, a quick note about ionic solutions. You will see concentrations of ionic solutions written like this, but that's a bit misleading. Really, what this means is that a 1.0 liter solution was made from 0.50 moles of sodium sulfate, but that really means that there would be 1.0 moles of sodium ions, 0.50 moles of sulfate ions, and absolutely no undissociated sodium sulfate in the solution since sodium salts are soluble. So the molar concentration of sodium ions in the solution is 1.0 molar, and the concentration of sulfate ions is 0.50 molar. How many moles of nitrate ions are there in 100.0 milliliters of a 0.120 molar solution of magnesium nitrate? Like before, we will use the given molarity and volume to calculate the amount in moles of magnesium nitrate. By multiplying the molarity by 0.100 liters, we get that there is 0.012 moles of magnesium nitrate in the solution. Magnesium nitrate is an ionic compound, which means that it will dissociate into magnesium ions and nitrate ions. From the formula, we see that two nitrate ions are needed to produce one magnesium nitrate molecule. This means that when magnesium nitrate dissociates, the concentration of nitrate ions will be two times the starting concentration of magnesium nitrate. So we'll multiply 0.012 moles by 2 to get that there is 0.024 moles of nitrate ions in our solution. And there we have it. Molarity. We can use the ideas we've learned here and apply them as an additional step when doing problems involving limiting reagents.